Dr. Ted Baer, Chairman and Founder of Movie Guide and the Christian Film and Television Commission. Good afternoon. How are you? Happy. I grew up in the entertainment industry. Uh, let me get my charts up there and I can show people what I'm talking about. Uh, we've been in the business for years, but I grew up uh, with parents who were actors. And I grew up without faith in values. And I was very anti-Christian for many years, as I told you last year if you were here. And uh, after funding five feature films, one of them was Oliver Stone's first film, uh, somebody introduced me to Jesus. And I'm so happy that I met Jesus because I tell you, the day that I met him, I gave up on drugs. I gave up on philandering. I gave up on all the things that, uh, and I didn't intend to. He freed me. And seven years later, when my father came to Christ, because I had done drugs with my father, he was, on, he was on Broadway, he could curse so loud you could hear him at the end of the room, and then probably in the next hotel down the road, but he stopped, because God rescues you. Now, let me go into detail about the movie God report. Last year, somebody was picking up all the reports, and I found out that he was responsible for Superman, and even Superman went to church, so if it's okay for Superman to go to church, it's okay for you to go to church. When I started, uh, when I came to Christ, I did the Lion, the Witch, and Wardrobe on CBS television because I'd gone to a cemetery in New York, a seminary rather in New York. And then I said it had taken 26 years for the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe to get to CBS. We were, had 37 million viewers. I said, how can we help you succeed? And the way we do that is through this report to the entertainment industry, the Movie God Awards. We give out $350,000 worth of prizes of the Movie God Awards. We try to encourage you, but we do this detailed economic analysis of the box office to show you what does better at the box office. And we have these wonderful criteria. Now, I don't expect any of you to read through this, but if you were to pay attention to these criteria, all the way from ontology, epistemology, semantics, and tactics, it sounds like a lot of big words, but if you and look at those criteria and define the movies, you'll find out that's what does better at the box office. People are always telling me, how do you find a redemptive film? Well, does it have a real worldview? Is it a real world with real pain, with real suffering that needs a real savior? 90% of the top grossing movies in the United States fit those categories. 0% were rated R, none had anti-American content, and if you look at this, wow, G-rated films constantly do better at the box office. And then we were talking about these films today, Heaven is for Real, Son of God. You, can, you all know this. Where is the money being made out there? If you want to make money, you make transcendence, you lose a lot of money. You make Pompeii. Now, I'm not telling you not to make them. If you want to lose a lot of money, it's okay. Because it'll just make a bad, better world for people who want to make money and then make more movies the next time around. Consider who buys movie tickets. Are you all aware of this? Is this something new in your mind? That evangelicals buy more movie tickets per capita per year than other people within the society. Why do they go to movies? Probably because they can't find great stuff in, uh, oh, I know, yeah. Hi, you too. <laughs> they can't, probably can't find great stuff on television. And look at the, what the movie audience, what is the church audience? 123 million people go to church every week. 75% believe biblical historical accuracy. This all came from Russ Jones. He sent it to me two days ago. What a, what a historical movie on the rise of Christianity. Would invite a non-believer to a movie about God. Think theaters don't show enough movies forming faith. But when we go overseas, we find out that the influence is even better. As Steve McAbee says, when he took uh, The Passion of Christ to Saudi Arabia, it did better per capita, Jeff, than it even did in the United States. Why is that, that it would do better in India and other places? We have an office in India. We have an office in Japan. We have an affiliate. We actually have been licensed in Germany and different places. It's because everybody wants somebody to save them from the dire circumstances they're in. They want good to triumph over evil when they realize how hard that is even Superman goes to church to find out who can save him. If you look at strong redemptive content, it constantly does better at the box office. That means for Charlie and other people in here, this is a no-brainer. Now, somebody said, well, this is terrible. You're telling people to make movies with faith and values just because they make more money? 
and the more explicit they are, they make more money? Boy, that's terrible, right? It, no, it's a good news. Paul says we don't care why the gospel is preached, whether out of greed or envy, as long as the gospel is preached. And the number of movies with faith and values has increased dramatically over the years. In fact, when we started Movie God in 1985, there was only one movie with a positive reference to Jesus Christ. So actually, we're in the golden age of good movies. Now, the more educated you are, the more concerned you are about movies and entertainment. Why is that? Because the more intelligent you are, the more influenced you are, which is why you all are in the movie business. You've got a better imagination. You understand what's going on. You're concerned. Movies, television, commercials have a tremendous influence. Otherwise, people wouldn't spend, Colin, uh, $74 billion on advertising. So movies can strengthen families or they can tear families apart. This weekend, you've got How to Train a Dragon 2 about a good father who cares for his son, or you have another movie, Jump Street, which is the opposite. You get the choice, building a family, destroying a family. And we encourage good movies. And the good news is, I was telling Charlie, we're on a lot of secular stations like Reels TV, and we get 20 uh, to 21 million in radio and uh, Nielsen ratings. We reach a lot of people, but that's for your benefit. I want you to come to the gala. I'd love to have you guys receive one of our 300, uh, you know, we give a $50,000 award for screenplays. We give a uh, $100,000 award for movies with faith and values, television with faith and values. We want to see you win. We started the movie guy. It was just a little press conference and a press club. And I thought that with fear and trembling that none of the entertainment industry was going to show up. And so many showed up that they were standing in the doorway. And looking now back at that is a, an exciting experience to reach the 20-year mark of the Movie Guide Awards uh, because we see it, it's, it's matured, it's blossomed beautifully, it's become a standard within the industry. I tell you, friend, I wouldn't trade my name, however small. It's written to be on the stars in that celestial hall for all the famous names on earth for the glory that they share. I'd rather be an unknown here and have my name up there. God bless you. We have to remember that movies are so powerful. They influence the way we dance and the music that we listen to and the way that we speak and the way that we feel. And what an honor to, to be able to tell a story and then to have it recognized. So we are so grateful for the people that are in the audience. It's not about us. It's about the people in the audience. They make the show. They made the movies. And we want them to be commended and applauded for what they've done. So it's about you. I praise God for you. God loves you. I love you. I'm glad that once upon a time in 1974, somebody told me about Jesus. And I hope you tell a lot of people about the good news that there is a change that can make in their life that will set them free from the bondage to the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, which is only self-destructive. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.